Hello teacups, welcome back. I'm currently in line at Starbucks and based off of your recommendations, I'm going to try a new drink today. I'm gonna try the dragon drink, so we'll see how this goes. <laughs> My turn to order. Should I get a grande or a venti? I don't know. Hi, um, can I get a grande um, dragon drink with light ice? Um, that's it. Thank you. Oh my gosh. I wanted to say pink drink out of habit. I was like, a grande. But yeah, I got a grande and not a venti because I don't know, I'm like scared I won't like it. I don't know. I'm sure I will like it. I'm just, I'm always a little nervous trying new drinks. Look at that. It is really cool. All right. Moment of truth. Oh wow. It's very mango-y. I don't know, I thought it was gonna taste different. Yeah, it tastes like mango, like a mango smoothie. It's good. Okay, we are now at the mall, and I get nervous when I'm filming in public, but we're gonna try our best. Welcome to day two of the vlog. I thought I filmed so much yesterday and after editing it turns out that I only filmed like three minutes worth of footage. So, who's playing back there? Margo! Hi! <laughs> I know you guys were saying how much you love longer vlogs, so I was like, okay, well I can just combine yesterday's vlog with today. So I'm gonna make some coffee. Um, not gonna lie, this is my second coffee of the day, <laughs> but it's fine. And then I'm gonna show you what I picked up at Barnes & Noble yesterday. I'm not actually going to be using my Keurig today because I'm gonna make some iced coffee because it is super hot outside and um, I actually prefer iced coffee over hot coffee anyway. Let me know in the comments down below if you like hot coffee or iced coffee. I'm definitely an iced coffee kind of girl. So for the iced coffee, we're gonna be using the Starbucks Dark Roast. I love the Dark Roast. And then we're gonna use the Natural Bliss Coffee Creamer in the flavor Sweet Cream. The things I picked up, I got this book, and this is um, this was on my most anticipated reads list for this year. It is Again But Better by Christine Riccio. And I'm gonna read you um, just like what the story is about in case you don't know. So it says, Shane has been doing college all wrong. She has stellar grades and happy parents, and it sounds ideal, but Shane's made zero friends and goes home every weekend. And romance? What's that? Her life has been dorm, dining hall, class, 
repeat. Time's ticking and she needs a change. There's nothing like moving to a new country to really mix things up. Shane signs up for a semester abroad in London. She's going to write all her college mistakes, make friends, pursue boys, and find adventure. Easier said than done. She is soon faced with the complicated realities of living outside her bubble, and when self-doubt sneaks in, her new life starts to fall apart. Shane comes to find that with the right amount of courage and determination, one can conquer anything. Throw in some fate and a touch of magic, and the possibilities are endless. I'm so excited for this and also something I did notice is that this book is yellow and what is that French toast on there? That's so cute! <laughs> I just might do a reading vlog for this because I truly cannot wait to dive into that. I also wanted to mention another book I got. I didn't actually pick this up at Barnes & Noble. I got this at Half Price Books, but I haven't shown it to you guys yet, so I thought I would just put it in this haul. So this is Digital Minimalism, another yellow book. Um, this is by Cal Newport, and this is Choosing a Focused Life in a noisy world. I think that's just so important because there are so many distractions nowadays and I just wanna be there and show up for my life and just be there 100%. So I think that book's gonna be really important. So super excited for that one as well. I also picked up these little bookmarks. Look how cute. We've got a little hippogriff, a baby mandrake, a little thestral, which honestly, that one's my favorite, and then a little Cornish pixie. <laughs> so cute and the last thing I picked up this was in the whimsical tech area this is the love mini neon light so let's do an unboxing hi Luna you want to help me with the unboxing oh why did I decide to like hold the camera while doing this okay ah! <gasps> look this is adorable okay I think I'm gonna set it next to this plant here um, so you guys ready to see it <gasps> oh my gosh that's gonna look really cute in the background of my videos look in the background that's so cute I love like little lights and stuff and I really debated I was like should I get the love sign or should I get the curtain lights um, but I ended up getting that and I'm so happy I got that so cute what do you think Luna do you love it <laughs> Also, I do have a wrap-up for you guys. This was my April wrap-up. This is also my Owls Readathon wrap-up. And if you aren't familiar with this readathon, it was created by G from Book Roast. I will have all of the links in the description box. I also have an entire playlist dedicated to these magical readathons. So originally I had planned on reading seven books. I completed four books, <laughs> which, you know, it's not as good as I was hoping, but here we are. <laughs> so for Defense Against the Dark Arts, I did a reread of The Raven Boys by Maggie Seawater. This is the first book in the Raven Cycle series. For the most part, I listened to the audiobook for this, and this audiobook is my favorite audiobook, like, ever. I mean, besides Harry Potter, but like these audiobooks are so good. These books are really hard to describe, and honestly, I think I've said this before, but it's best to go into these books pretty blindly because that's basically what I did, and I was just so surprised by everything, and it was just such a great adventure to go on. And I feel so connected to these characters, like they feel like my best friends, and I feel like that's how it should be when you're reading a book. I highly recommend this series, it's one of my favorite series ever, so I gave this a five out of five stars. The next book was also a reread and this was for History of Magic and this is Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. I usually like to read a Harry Potter book for these readathons since it is like a very like Harry Potter based readathon. This is my original copy. I actually was reading a newer copy that I own because my original copies have been read so many times that like they're starting to fall apart and I just want to preserve them as much as possible. And um, yeah, of course I rated this five out of five stars. <laughs> what else would I rate that? For Divination, I read Shatter Me by Tahira Mafi. And this book, I really thought I was going to love this book. And oh man. <laughs> It ended up being a lot more romance-based than I 
thought it was going to be. I'm not really a huge fan of like heavily romance based books and I felt like this was a bit cheesy. Um, so I gave this a 2 out of 5 stars. A lot of you said that the rest of the series is really good so I may give it a fair chance. Um, but yeah, I wasn't a super big fan of that. And then the last book I read, this was, if I'm like looking over here, it's because I have my bullet journal and I can't remember which class I read this for. Oh, for charms. I read Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. This is Creative Living Beyond Fear. I loved this book. It was so inspirational. I really struggled on rating this book because I really wanted to give it five out of five stars, but there were just some parts of the book where I was like, mm, this kind of just feels like fluff to me. Um, but for the most part, I thought it was super, super good. So I gave this four out of five stars. So on Goodreads, I said four stars. I was so torn on what to rate this. There were some parts that spoke straight to my soul, and then there were some parts that felt kind of meh. But overall, I gained a new and fresh perspective on what it means to live a creative life. I felt so carefree after reading Liz's words, and that's what I loved most about this book. Yeah, I feel like that's the best word for this book, like carefree. It really left me feeling just very free-spirited, and no matter what I want to do with my creative life, I can just go and do it. Because at the end of the day, being creative, honestly, to me, it means creating things that make you happy. So yeah, I really enjoyed this. I really recommend to anyone who feels like, you know, they're like a creative soul or whatever because it is super, super inspiring. So I think that pretty much concludes today's vlog and it was really fun chatting about books with you guys. I feel like we haven't done that in a while. So yeah, um, I hope you guys enjoyed the vlog and I will see you again soon. Thanks for watching, bye.